Hi there guys, how you doing? I'm Chimpanzee that 45 and I'm here today with the first episode of my Nottingham Forest career mode. And let's get straight into it and this episode is going to be mainly uh, focused on the early transfer deals and uh, my first three pre-season friendlies. So you can see that I'm going through the list of players here and this is what I always tend to do at the start of a, a career mode. I always tend to look at who I can maybe send out on loan. And in this, case, in this case, we look at Jack Blake and Kieran Wallace, two 17-year-olds. We also put Robbie Finley on the list because they have plenty of time to develop. Jonathan Greening at the age of 33 doesn't, so I put him on the transfer list. Now, we're looking maybe for a, a, another striker because we have a fair few, but they're not the highest quality. And this lad looks pretty good, Marco Livaja, or Livaja. I don't know how to pronounce it, quite frankly, from Inter. So we're going to go in with quite a, quite a big bid of uh, a full season loan and then 1.1 million um, buy buy out clause afterwards and we get an offer here from Bristol City for Jonathan Green and, and to be honest uh, for what it's worth it's a bit less than his uh, his valuation but to be honest I'm not that fussed if it's only 10,000 short so you can see looking at the full backs I have three right backs um, one of them is Sam Hutchinson who's got quite good potential he's only 22 years old so I put him out on loan but only one left back so I'm quite keen to sort of address that issue and uh, we look at this guy from Guadalajara called Miguel Angel Ponce I think that's how you pronounce his name 23 years old he looks like he's got quite good potential and they're asking for a price of around £770,000 but I think I'm going to go a bit lower than £750,000 and see how they come back I'm also looking at this centre back and he is uh, well yeah look at that face that's one of the reasons I chose him the expression on that face is tremendous I'm not going to try and pronounce his name, but we go for a season loan and then 1.2 million uh, fee afterwards because we only have three centre backs. And you can see Inter Milan come back here to our offer for that striker and basically say thanks but no thanks, um, which is a bit of a shame because he looks so he could have been a decent player. But nevertheless, we continue on our quest for a left back and this lad pops up, Luke Shaw, who some of you may well have heard of at Southampton. He is a very uh, highly praised and highly thought of youngster, only 16. He has massive potential to go places and he could really be a, a top player in the future. So we go for a £305,000 fee after a season loan and we'll see how Southampton come back to us and they come back to us by saying, give it a bit more time and we'll get back to you then. So... They haven't said yes, but they haven't said no, which is quite encouraging, actually. It maybe makes me think they'll say yes, because um, if they're going to say no, they would have just said no straight away. And you can see here that Roma say that they want, um, well, pretty much the same as Inter, so thanks but no thanks. And Guadalajara say that they want a bit more. And looking at the offer, I think, well, he's 23 years old and he's, he's 69, so he's got plenty of potential to go on. So we do go up to their evaluation, or to their valuation of him. As for the centre half, Roman uh, Gnoli, I don't know, <laughs> I don't really, I'm not that fussed about him because there are plenty of other players out there, such as this chap, Ignazi Miguel, or Mikel, who plays for my beloved Arsenal, and uh, I think what we're going to do here is we'll probably go for the same offer, and uh, we do, and in fact, yeah, we do, but we don't go for a full season with a future fee. We just go for a full season. You can see here that the uh, MK Dons come in with an offer for Sam Hutchinson, which I'm quite happy for him to go on a short-term loan basis. And uh, you can see here that Southampton come back and give us the green light for Luke Shaw, which I'm quite surprised about, actually. I'd have thought that at his age, which is actually now 17, he's aged by a year, so his, his birthday is obviously around the, the uh, July period that they would have maybe wanted to keep hold of him a bit more. And you also see here that Arsenal come back and say, you can have Miguel. Um, he, he is quite a highly, highly touted player at the age of 19, and uh, he could be very useful to us because that gives us four centre-backs, which I always prefer instead of three. So we can see going into our first game here against Bordeaux, the French team, quite a strong team. And I do put out pretty much a first, uh, first 11 with Miguel and Shaw, on the bench, our new uh, our new sign-ins, only on loan, yes. And uh, here we are into the highlights of the game now. It's quite a quiet game, but uh, Bordeaux do actually take the lead um, on the uh, well in the first half, which was quite a disappointment. And they did they did play relatively well, but I think this was this game was more about just learning the team for me. It wasn't necessarily about results. And I don't think all pre-season uh, pre friendlies are. And you can see there we have a decent chance which is stopped, but uh, at this point I decide to take off Halford and uh, bring on Shaw and also to bring on uh, Miguel in place of 
Daniel Ayala and they actually do really well in, in all honesty they actually do really well nothing much happens apart from that and we lose the game 1-0 but as far as first games go for a team like Forest to lose only by goals to nil to a team of Bordeaux's stature I'm not really all that bothered and uh, it was more about finding my feet with the team really getting to know what what the players are like skill wise and uh, moving on we go into our first away game we're away to Nice so we're keeping a French theme going and I I name a bit of a change team give players like Henry Lansbury a chance we also start with Shaw and Miguel and you can see Dexter Blackstock with a nice low curling shot after only 10 minutes gives us a lead but then straight away and I was really disappointed about this because I wanted to get a lead and I got it we then go and concede a penalty and uh, that was a massive shame for us that really was a massive shame and they get into it as you can see 12 minutes I didn't touch the ball between them kicking off and them scoring and Lansbury his touch was really poor I was really disappointed you can see their heavy touch they play it up the field and they score and they're in the lead with seven or eight minutes left to go in the first half which was really disappointing so I took Lansbury off after only 38 minutes and I bought and well you don't need to know who I bought on because we get straight back into the game with Cox, a great equaliser. And you can actually see there that Moosey, who made the tackle, was actually uh, sent off for that foul in the box for the penalty. And so we bring on Matt Derbyshire, who's only actually 65, but he was really energetic throughout the game. I was really impressed with him. And you can see here, last minute, 3-2 down, we go all out. Blackster plays it to Derbyshire and he fires it over the, uh, over the crossbar. It was actually a uh, black stock, rather. And uh, anyway, we move on. We do lose that game 3 2. We're looking at Hal Robson Carnu, the Reading midfielder, who uh, is a Premier League player, but I think he'd be willing to take the step down for more future football. And we go with a £250,000 offer and Robbie Finley, which is quite a way down below his valuation, but maybe that player will, um, will maybe tempt them around. We'll have to wait and see. Going to the next game, I decide to give Matt Derbyshire a start and immediately, with their Premier League experience, West Ham take the lead. Andy Carroll smashes it in from uh, from point-blank range, really, and we have no chance there. That was disappointing. But, unfortunately, we suffer a bit of a, a, a knockback in the fact that Simon Cox gets injured. But we bring on Robbie Finley, and you can see him here on the ball. He forces a sock from the keeper, who I don't believe was Zussi Ascalina. I believe they had somebody else in goal. And uh, referring back to the Harold Robson Carnu situation, Coppinger there, who put the corner in for Daniel Ayala with a bullet header, he actually had quite a good game out on that left midfield. So maybe Harold Robson Carnu isn't needed. You can see Coppinger again here, cutting inside, getting a shot away, and it's a good save from the keeper to knock it round the corner. And he's constantly involved, Coppinger. He's here with the corner again, and Ayala wins it, and Moosey. Look at this, turning inside and fires a shot and it, well, that was a tremendous effort and it's a great goal. I was really impressed with that and I think he made up for his red card in the first game, sorry, second game. And uh, yeah, the, the less said about that, the better really. There's a bit of a mistake for me. Well, it was a huge mistake for me on 87 minutes. It's now 2 all, Alu Diara and all of a sudden he's in again and he scores again. Alu Diara, two goals in three minutes. We were 2-1 up with three minutes to go. And we end up losing that one 3-2. That was a shocker for us and a real big disappointment. But uh, after the game, you can see that Hal Robson Carnu isn't um, considered worthy to be let go for that little. And you can see that we have to we have to leave uh, Simon Cox out of the team for four weeks. And so looking at maybe a bit of a replacement for that amount of time, we've got Joseph Akpala. Or Ak 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 I don't know. His name is a bit confusing. But you can see there we go for a, a two million pounds fee, which is a big amount in in one player. And um, you can see here also Henry Lansbury suffers a bruised leg, and they come back and say that that's quite all right. We're quite happy for you to for you to talk to him now. Two million pounds is enough for us, which is great. But I don't know if I actually need him. I don't know if I actually need him. So he wants five thousand pounds a week. He wants a three year contract. So we'll give him that for sure. A bonus per goal. Mm. Probably not, and there's no point for me offering uh, a, a squad role unless it's absolutely certain, because you're always likely to change it dependent on form. But he actually comes back and declines. He actually says that he doesn't want to move away from the area, and he's quite committed to Werder Bremen. 
And so I think, okay, well, I'll offer him a higher amount. And our wage budget is crazy. We have a £5,000 wage budget, but we have a £4 million transfer bill. And that can be reversed so easily to 70 30 percent, uh, percent balance. And now we have £20,000 to play with with wages. So I give him a 20% a 20 goal uh, bonus and put the wage up by just £1,000. And uh, we'll have to see in the next episode whether he comes back because at the start of the next episode we will be playing our first competitive game in the League Cup at home to Oldham but I hope you've enjoyed the episode guys this, that is the end of that I'll be back with the next episode probably at the end of the week and then I'll be off to the Lake District for a couple of a couple of days till uh, a week Thursday so thanks a lot for watching guys I hope you've enjoyed it leave your thoughts in the comment section below like comment and subscribe and that would be awesome thanks a lot for watching guys I'm Tim at 45 cheerio